Okay, Chloe, thank you very much. Hey, folks, here in the, in the Cloud City, we're here at Daniel Rosen, great to see you. Um, watching you up on stage, I got to say, as the CEO of Telco DR, leader and chief executive of that company, as well as a great visionary, you laid out the vision. It's hard to debate that. I mean, I think there's people who will say that vision is like freedom, no one can debate it. It's going to happen. Yeah, there's still a lot of debate in our industry about it. Um, there's a lot of articles being written about it. I've referenced one about, you know, should we let the dragons into the castle? For me, I think it's super obvious. I think other industries are like, duh, we've made the move. And Telco's still like, hmm, we're not sure. And so, am I a visionary? I don't know. I'm just sort of just Babe Ruthing it a little bit. I think that's where we're going. You know, you do. You have a lot of content. You podcast, you write blogs, you do a lot of speaking. You brought it all together on stage. Yeah. Right? That's got to feel good. Right? Yeah. You've got a body of work. <laughs> and it came together very nicely. How did you feel up there? Oh my God, it's absolutely nerve wracking. I sort of feel like, you know, could you tell if my hands were shaking? Right? Could you t tell that my heart was racing? Um, it's a good feeling though. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm happy it's over. I'm happy. I think I did yeah. a really great job. And yeah, you I'm did really a great happy job. I love the dragon. Have it in the can. It's fantastic. <laughs> Just love the drag Game of Thrones vibe there. It was cool. <laughs> totally. There. Uh, one of the things I want to pick up on I thought was very interesting and, and unique was the iPhone reference 14 years ago because that really, to me, was a seminal moment because that shifted the smartphone, a computer that happened to make phone calls. And then the, we all knew who was the leader at that time, Nokia, Blackberry with phones, and they became toast. That ushered in a whole other era of, of change, wealth creation, innovation, new things. Yeah. Well, up until that moment, carriers had been designing the phones themselves. They were branded with their, with their logos. And so Steve Jobs fought for the design of the iPhone. He designed it with the consumer, with the, with the user in mind. But I think what it really, I mean, it's such a big pivotal moment in our industry because it singled the end of voice revenue and ushered in the era of data. But it also introduced the OTT players, right, that came in through the apps and started to siphon our poop from the carriers. I mean, this is like, it's a pivotal moment in the industry, yeah. right? Changed the industry forever. It's a step function, it was a step function change, it was obvious, everyone knew it. But what's interesting is, is that we were riffing yesterday about ORAN and Android. So you have iPhone, but Android became a very successful open source project that changed the landscape of the handset. Some are saying that, that kind of phenomena is coming here. It's yeah. a telco with yeah. software, kind of like an Android model where That'll come in. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, the that? disaggregation of the of the hardware, right? We're in we're in the iconic uh, Ericsson booth, right? They get most of their revenue from from RAN, from Radio Access Networks, and now with the introduction of Open RAN, right, with 50% less capex, 40% less opex, you know, I think it's easiest for greenfield operators like Dish that are building a brand new network. But just this month, Vodafone announced they're going to build the world's largest Open RAN network. Change is happening, yeah. and the big operators are starting to adopt Open RAN in a real, a real big way. So to me, riding the dragon means taking advantage of new opportunities on top of that dragon, developing apps like, like the iPhone did. And, and you, you mentioned Android; they got it right. Remember, win, remember the Windows Phone, right? They tried to take Windows <laughs> and shove it into the phone. It was a Kin phone too. I'm right. trying to delete was, it from my look here. Like, okay, I'm going to take this <laughs> old world app and I'm going to shove it into the new world. And guess what? It failed. Yeah. So if the if the if, if the telcos try to do the same thing here, it will fail. But if they start building 5G apps in the cloud and think, think cloud native and think about the consumer, isn't really that the opportunity that we're talking about? Well, I think. It is, absolutely, and I think it's a wake-up call for the vendors in our space, right? And I'm certainly trying to become a vendor with Tatogi, um, really pushing my idea, but you can't take, using your Windows example on the Windows phone, you can't take a Windows app and stuff it onto a phone, and you can't take these old school applications that were written 20 years ago and just stuff them into the cloud, right? The cloud is not a place, it's a way to design applications, and it all needs to be rewritten, and yeah, it's not a right, destination, as we always say. Let's take a step back on the keynote, because I know we just did a couple highlights there. It wasn't the whole thing. Uh, we were watching it, by the way. We thought you did a great job. You were very cool and calm under pressure. But take us through the core ideas in the keynote. Break down the core elements of what the talk was about. Yeah, I think the headline really is, you know, um, just like there were good and bad things about the iPhone, right? It, it, it killed voice, but introduced data and, and all these other things. There's good and bad things about the public cloud, right? Um, it's not going to be smooth sailing, no downsides, and so I acknowledge that, even though I'm the uh, 
self-appointed queen, you know, this self-appointed <laughs> uh, evangelist. And so I think that if you completely ignore the public cloud, try to stick your head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist, I think there's nothing but downsides for telcos. And so I think you need to learn how to maximize uh, the advantage there, ride the dragon, like spew some fire and, and you know, get some, some speed and, and height, and then you can, can double your ARPU. But I think going from there, so the next three, I was trying to give examples of what I meant by that, of why it's a double-edged sword, why it's two sides of the coin. And I think there's three areas, which is the enterprise, the network, and the relationship with subscribers. And so that really with the talk, that's what the talk is the about. The three main pillars. Yeah, yeah. Future at work, enterprise, transition, um, open RAN. Right, network. the network and then the relationship with the subscribers. Those are the structural elements you yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the most important one you think right now that Ooh. people are focused on? I mean, I think the first one with work, that's an easy one to do because it's, there's not too much downside, right? I think we all learned that we could work productively from home. Um, the reason public cloud mattered there is because we had tools like Zoom and G Suite, and we didn't need to be, I mean, imagine if this had happened even 20 years ago, right? Broadband of the home wasn't ready, the, the tools were, weren't ready. I mean, it would have been, I mean, a bigger disaster than it was, right? And so this is an opportunity to sort of ride this work from home wave that a lot of CEOs are saying, we're not coming back, or we're going to have smaller offices. And all of those employees need fiber to the home. They need 5G at the home. I mean, if I'm a head of enterprise in a telco, I'm shifting my 5G message from like random applications or whatever to be like, how are you, how are you getting big pipes to the home so your workers can be productive there? And not, I, don't, I don't hear telcos talking about that. I think that's a really good idea. No, you say it's a no-brainer, but it's interesting. You had your buildings crumbling, which is great. <clears throat> really nice, nice effect yeah, yeah. from the talk. I heard an executive, Wall Street executive the other day, talking about how my people will be back in the office. I'm going to you know, mandate vaccinations. They're going to be back in the office. You work for me. Even though it's an employee-friendly environment right now, I don't care. And I was shocked. I said, okay, it's just going to look good. But, and it's not just the fact that it's an, an old guy, old guard doing that. Because I take two examples of old guys. Michael Dell and Frank Slootman. Yeah. Right? Michael Dell, you, you know, $100 billion company, Frank Slootman, hottest you know, software company, both of them sort of agree. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Why should I spend all this money on buildings and my people are going to be more productive? They love yeah. it. Well, <laughs> so I why think fight the office, fashion? And I can talk about this for a long time, and I know we don't have that much time, but on offices, it's a way to see when did you come in and when did you leave and look over your shoulder and what were you working on, and that's what offices are for. Now we tell ourselves it's about collaboration and all this other stuff. And you know, these guys are saying, come back to the office. It's because they don't have an answer on how to manage productivity. What are you working on? Are you, off, are you authentically working 40 hours a week? I want to see you. I know if you at least, you're here. You're here. Now you might be playing, you know, Minesweeper. You might be playing Minesweeper on your computer, but at least you were, your butt was at your computer. So, um, yeah, I think this is a, a pivotal moment in work. I think telcos could push it. Work from home. We'll get you the pipes. We'll get you the cloud-based tools to help yeah. manage um, Productivity, it's a change in work yeah, style. Yeah, and we've, we've covered this on theCUBE many times, about the, how software is going to enable this virtual first model. No one's actually built software for virtual first. I think that's going to happen. Again, back to your theme of software. But I want to ask you about software uh, defined infrastructure. You mentioned ORAN, and as software eats the world and eats infrastructure, you still need infrastructure. So talk about the relationship of how you see ORAN competing and winning with the balance of software versus the commodity hardware. Yeah, and I think this is really where people get scared in telco. I mean, authentically nervous, right? Where you're like, okay, really the public cloud is at that network edge, right? We're really gonna, like, who are we? It's an identity crisis. We're not the towers anymore. We're running space, right? We're now disaggregating the, the network, putting the edge cloud right there, and it's AWS or Google. Who are we? What do we do? Are we networks? Are we a tech company? Right? And so I'm like, guys, you are your subscribers. And you don't focus on that. I mean, it's kind of like a last thought. So you're like a therapist then, too. Not I'm a little bit of a therapist. Okay, <laughs> okay, lie down on the couch, Telco. Let's talk we'll, about we'll what take... your problems are. <laughs> they have tower issues. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's... All serious, no, but the tower's changing. I mean, backhaul, I mean, look at Direct Connect, for instance, the rise of Direct Connect killed the exchanges. I mean, broadband, backhaul, last mile. Yeah completely still issues, yeah. but it's going to software, and, and so that's there. The other thing I want to get to quickly, I know we don't have a lot of time, is 
the love relationship you talk about with subscribers. We had Peter uh, Adderton on from uh, Boost Mobile, formerly Boost Mobile, yeah. earlier. He was saying, if you don't have a fr uh, focus on the customer, then you just sell them minutes and that's it. Yeah. And he's, his point was they don't really care. Yeah. Let's talk about organizational energy, right? How much energy is contained within any organization, not just telco, but any organization, to some of your people times the hours they work per week. And then you think of that as a stack and how you're allocating your time and spending your time, right? And so I think they spend 50% of their time, maybe more, fighting servers, machines, the network, right? And, and having all these battles. How much of that organizational energy is dedicated to driving great subscriber experiences? And it's, it's just shrunk, right? And I think that's where the public cloud can really help them. Like, ride the dragon. Let the dragon deal with some of this underlying stuff so that you can ride the dragon, survey the land, focus on your, on your subscriber, and back to this, the software. Use software, just like the OTT players are doing, that are taking away your ARPU, they're siphoning your ARPU, because they're providing a better customer experience. You need to compete on that dimension, not the network, not the, uh, the three telcos in the country. You're competing against WhatsApp, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and you spend how much of your organizational energy to focus on that? Very small. And that's what digital platforms are all about. Everybody uses the word platform. Why? Because everybody wants to be a platform. Why do you want to be a platform? Because I want to be like Amazon. Yeah. They're a platform. And, and you think about Netflix. Yeah. Right? It's not a, you know, you don't think about Netflix UK or Network, Net, Netflix Spain, it, it, right? There's global. one Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. One, not, you don't think about their marketing department or their sales department or their customer service. You think about the app. Yeah. You know, <laughs> one interface. And that's what digital platforms allow you to do. And you know, granted, there's a lot of public policy to deal with, but if you're shooting satellites up in space, yep. you know, now you know, who owns that space? Right? right? A global network. And what makes Netflix so good, I think, is that it knows you, right? It knows what you're watching and recommends things, and you're like, oh, I would like that, that's great. Who knows more about you than your mobile phone? Carry it everywhere you go, right? What you're watching, what you're doing, who you're calling, what time did you wake up? And right now, all of that data we talked about a couple days ago is trapped in siloed old systems. And like, why do people think Google knows so much about you? Telco yeah. knows about you. And start to use that to drive a great experience. And you got a great relationship with Netflix. The relationship we have with our, our carrier is, oh, to your admin, can you call these guys yeah. and figure, oh, I don't know, I lost the password, I can't get right. in. It's I like, don't have an hour or, and a or half. You get sin, or get SIM hacked for your I don't have an hour and a half to call your call center because right. you don't have a chat bot. I don't have time. Right, right. chat bot. Right? I can't even do the chatbot, because my problem is, you're like, I got to talk to someone. All of their systems are built with the intention of a human being on the other side, and there's all this awesome chatbot AI that works. Yeah. Set it free. Yeah, yeah, right. You'd yeah. almost rather go to the dentist than Well, we got, we're going to wrap things up here on the keynote review. Um, did you achieve what you wanted to achieve? I mean, controversy, um, bold vision, leadership, obviously that came across, but people, they know who you are now, you're out there, and that's great news. Yeah, I think I rock the telco universe, and I'm really, that was my goal, and I think I accomplished it, so very excited, <laughs> for sure. Well, we love having you on theCUBE, it's great to have great conversations, not only are you dynamic and smart, you're causing a lot of controversy, in a good way, and getting, waking people up to- Making people talk, and that's a start. I think the conversations are there, people are, people are talking and having relationships on the ecosystem, open, it's all there. Daniel Royston, you are digital revolution, DR, <laughs> Telco DR. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Appreciate Always it. fun. Great to see you. Okay. Thanks. Now, of course, back to the Cloud City Studios. Adam is going to take it from here and continue on day three of the Cube. Adam and Studio, thanks for having us and take it from here. <laughs>